I'm sure you're all sick and tired of hearing me talk about Battlefront 2 by now, and I apologize in advance, but this shit needs to be talked about. EA has come under heavy fire over the past few days after players got their hands on Battlefront 2 and saw it for what it really was, an amalgamation of EA's greed. It all began with complaints about how the game blocks Hallmark heroes like Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader behind a ridiculous in-game currency paywall that demanded dozens to hundreds of hours of grind that could potentially encourage mass loot box purchases. When EA tried to defuse the situation by providing some bullshit defense about how this was done to give us a sense of pride and accomplishment, their comment became the most downvoted in Reddit history. This was then followed by an official response in which they decided to scale down the cost of locked heroes by 75%, but we also learned that in exchange, the award for completing the game single player campaign was also reduced by 75%, from 20,000 credits to 5,000 credits. And more recently, allegations that EA purposely removed Battlefront 2's refund option so that customers would have to go through customer support to complete the refund as a means to discourage them from going through with the extensive process has been spreading like wildfire, although as I pointed out in my previous video, these allegations were misleading and ultimately proven false. With all that out of the way, one last thing I need to talk about is the way EA has limited the amount of credits you can earn via Battlefront 2's arcade mode. For those who don't know what arcade mode is, think of it as a single player or local co-op playground separate from competitive multiplayer where you play against bots and can try out all of the game's different classes, heroes, and play through various pre-made battle scenarios. As you play through these battle scenarios, you will unlock more of them and add at higher difficulty with different modifiers, and it's essentially a great way to learn the game, fuck around, and unwind. Completing battle scenarios in arcade mode also rewards you with a small amount of credits, making it a great way to rack up some in-game currency in a non-stressful, non-competitive environment. From what I've seen, one arcade mode session will net you 100 credits, which is about a third of what you'd get if you played a multiplayer match, which is a fair compromise considering that one arcade mode battle scenario takes about half as long as a multiplayer match and isn't nearly as involved. But where this potentially great system all goes to hell is, as you might expect, with EA's meddling. It has come to my attention that arcade mode has a cap on how many credits you can earn. The game basically asks you to wait until the next day before you can earn credits from arcade mode again, and, well, reactions like these speak for themselves. More credits available in three hours. More credits available in three hours. We're sorry. You were enjoying arcade mode too much, so we have to stop giving you prizes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Were you enjoying arcade mode? Because you have to wait three hours now to get more credits out of arcade mode. Are you fucking shitting me? The logic behind this restriction isn't all that hard to deduce when you consider EA's past history of scummy business tactics. They want to make sure that players stay engaged in the multiplayer environment and be constantly exposed to loot boxes and the temptation of being able to purchase them with real money to accelerate progress and gain a significant competitive edge. They can't do that if players have an avenue to earn all their credits through arcade mode. And look, to some degree, I understand that earning credits through arcade mode has to be regulated to prevent players from farming a bunch of credits in single player mode to influence their multiplayer progress. I get that there has to be some separation between single player progression and multiplayer progression, but EA's solution to just lock players out of currency rewards outright on a daily basis is the worst possible way they could have handled it. The way I would have done it is to make it so that if you successfully complete a battle scenario for the first time, you get the full 100 credits, but if you repeat scenarios you've already beaten, you still get credits, just significantly less of it, all without a cap on how many credits you can earn through arcade mode on a daily basis. That way, players still get rewarded handsomely for playing through all of arcade mode's battle scenarios, and there is still incentive to replay them to get a higher score and whatnot. You still get some credits, but at the same time, players are encouraged to play multiplayer matches to make faster progress in multiplayer. I feel like they could have worked out something to 
provide a balance and to give players full autonomy over how they play their game rather than this shitty one-sided system in which EA dictates the terms. But as I said many times before, EA doesn't care about balancing their games or optimizing the player experience. All they care about is maximizing profit. By putting a ceiling on the number of credits you can earn per day through arcade mode, EA's goal is to nudge players away from arcade mode and towards multiplayer, where the core of the game's loot box progression system resides, through which EA can ultimately maximize the potential to monetize player engagement and all that bullshit. So yeah, if you thought there couldn't possibly be another reason to further hate EA and their rampant greed, despite all that's happened over the past few days. I'm sorry to say that EA seems to know no bounds or limits. And I can bet you that once the game officially launches on November 17th, as the game continues to be dissected, more of EA's manipulative, predatory, and exploitative tactics will be unearthed for gamers to be pissed about. Once again, apologies for making so many Battlefront 2 videos over the past few days, but I feel as though all of these recent developments deserve their own separate video, as each of Battlefront 2's scummy aspects provide their own angle on just how full of shit EA is. Each aspect is a unique cog with a pivotal role to play in Battlefront 2's abomination of a microtransactions machine that need to be individually highlighted to understand just how meticulously far EA will go to milk your wallets dry. Anyway, with that, I would like to end this news update and discussion video. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you found this video insightful. I hope that I've given you yet another reason to save your money for a product that actually respects you. And if you enjoy my content, consider supporting me on Patreon. All contributions will go towards helping this channel remain 100% independent and self-sustained. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.